Salutations and welcome, friends. I'm your host of this Preakness Spotlight Series video on instant coffee. My name is Matthew DeSantis. You can find me on Twitter at the handle at Failed to Menace. Make sure to throw me a follow there. Make sure to subscribe to Trust the Profits here on YouTube. We have so much great content, whether it's this Spotlight Series, whether you're talking about live betting, whether you're talking about handicapping, horse racing news, whether you're talking about our new newest member of the trust the prophets team jessica tugwell she's going to be dropping weekly pedigree episodes they're great little snippets six seven eight minutes long they're not very long easy to digest if you want to learn more about horse pedigree i mean she is so knowledgeable she's an expert in this area she does a lot of it i mean she does it for her full-time job this is something which really and we're so excited to have her as part of the team dropping some of these videos. So make sure to press that subscribe button. Make sure to like this video and let me know in the comments what you think Instant Coffee's chances are in this year's Preakness Stakes. And listen, Instant Coffee is a really fascinating horse. He's a horse that we saw early on as a two-year-old and early on as a three-year-old. And when we were doing our Trust the Profits top 25 rankings, Instant Coffee was typically always in the top five really from the time we started doing it up until the Louisiana Derby when he had a very poor performance and not only dropped off the top 25, did not earn enough points to even make the Kentucky Derby. So he's a very fascinating horse to talk about. He's got a very distinct running style. He's got some fascinating pedigree that I'm interested in talking a little bit more about. But he's a horse that, like I said, is now coming into this Preakness. It was interesting when the when the field and the probables were first being publicized and announced for the Preakness, you didn't see instant coffee on there anywhere. And he thought, huh, that's kind of interesting. You know, he thought maybe Brad Cox would bring Angel of Empire back or one of his other horses ultimately as first mission in the race. But he decides to bring instant coffee and more and more uh, momentum is going behind bringing instant coffee into this race. And so let's talk a little bit about this horse. So it's a Brad Cox trained horse. And like I said, this was one of the top horses on the Derby field and on the Derby prep trail when we were leading up to the final round of preps, Louisiana Derby, Florida Derby, bluegrass, et cetera. Instant coffee. We largely thought was probably one of the top three to four major contenders. The pedigree is quite fascinating. Bolt Doro up top, uncle Mo dam underneath. Here's the thing about Bolt Doros. And I should be very honest. I am a sucker for Bolt Doros. I like them. One of my former students, this is a very bizarre story, but it's true. One of my former students, when I taught at the University of Texas El Paso, actually was the person who named Bolt Doro. Uh, she ended up kind of schooling him when he was very young, in between, I think is, uh, I want to say in between two and three, uh, or maybe it'd be, maybe even before he started racing. Uh, no, it would have been before he started racing between one and two. Uh, he went up to her ranch and she really worked with him a lot and she and her husband, and she ended up being the one to name him Bolt Doro. So I've always been a sucker for Bolt Doros since then. Um, that said, Bolt Doros have struggled to get the distance as they've gotten older. Very precocious first crop, very impressive first time out starters, very good sprinters. We see this with a horse like Corona Bolt, for instance, an excellent sprinter. But as they've stepped up beyond a mile and a 16th, and in some cases even to a mile and a 16th, we've seen those Bolt Doros falter a little bit. They've not been getting the routing distances necessarily. Now, you got Uncle Mo underneath, and there's some, you know, and, and another dam from Empire Maker, a second dam from Empire Maker. So there's, underneath, there's some distance, certainly, to suggest that this horse should be able to handle a classic distance. I think it's interesting he's going to the Preakness ra rather than something like the Belmont. He's got a running style that makes you think he always wants more distance, but it's always important to not confuse distance running style with pedigree just because a horse likes to come from the back doesn't mean they necessarily want more distance think of a horse like i mean this is a very over-the-top example but think of a horse like tejano twist tejano twist is a sprinter but he likes coming from the back it doesn't mean we should keep stretching tejano twist out it's just that's his running style instant coffee a little bit the same has a very alluring running style coming from the back a little bit like red route one but doesn't have that sort of dazzling turn of foot that Red Route 1 has is much more of a grinder, just kind of grinds away at competition, just wears people down. 
And this was always a concern, I think, on the Derby Prep Channel, which was, was this a horse that was going to do well in the Derby? It didn't have that kind of great turn of foot, did feel like it was going to be very pace dependent. And that's a little bit of what we've seen from Instant Coffee over his career. Now, the crazy part about Instant Coffee was and is that he's only running five races. He's a very lightly raced horse, and yet it feels like we've talked about him forever because he had that long layoff after the LeCompte stakes between the LeCompte and the Louisiana Derby. And during that break, I'm not sure if any horse has benefited and has had his estimation grow while not racing the way Instant Coffee did. Because here's the thing. After that LeCompte, everybody who came back from that race started winning. They started winning. You know, two fills we saw came back, started winning. We started seeing, you know, um, confidence game come back and start winning. We saw even a horse like Dennington come back and win a race. So we saw all these horses that were in the LeCompte come back and win and win in big spots. And we thought, geez, if Instant Coffee beat those horses, and now they're coming back to beat these other horses and other circuits, how good is Instant Coffee? Well, then we got the answer a little bit in the Louisiana Derby. A mile and three sixteenths, so it was stretching out quite a bit further, coming off a little over a two-month layoff, and got zero pace to run into. Very slow early fractions with King Bus Barnes and Disarm up there on the front end. Came running, I think ended up sixth in that race, but a very kind of uninspiring sixth. Yeah, finished there, and you see the Equibase speed figure of an 86. Here's the other thing. he Really, he has not popped huge Equibase speed figures other than that LeCompte stakes, and that was a 99. Mage and others have posted plus 100 buyer sp or Equibase speed figures multiple times at this point. So it is interesting to see that he... You know, again, one real huge effort in that LeCompte, certainly the Claiborne Breeders Futurity finishing fourth behind Forte, behind Loggins. That was a good effort there, no doubt about it, behind Red Route 1, I believe, in, in that race as well. Uh, you know, certainly a good effort there. Kentucky Jockey Club wheels right back, wins that race uh, as well, very impressively. So three wins in five starts over very serious competition, grade two, grade three winner. But again, when he didn't get the pace up front, it didn't set up for him particularly well in the Louisiana Derby. Now I'm a little bit worried when we start talking about this Preakness stakes for him. Because here's the thing. We just got word that confidence game on Saturday has scratched from the Preakness. Is will not, not scratched, but just will not be entered in the Preakness stakes. You start looking at the field for the Preakness, and it lacks any early speed other than first mission, and National Treasure. Those two, you would imagine, are going to be sitting in a very forwardly placed position, probably sitting one, two. Here's another thing to keep in mind. It's a very small sample size, admittedly, but opening day at Pimlico was on Friday. They ran six dirt races there. Five of the six dirt winners went wire to wire, gate to wire. Okay. They are, I said this in multiple videos. They get this track souped up to hold up front end speed. That's just what they do. And if you know that, you know how to handicap for it. You understand what type of horses are going to do well in it. So it's one of those things where, you know, this, I don't know if this race sets up particularly well for instant coffee. I don't think it sets up very well for red route one. I don't think it sets up well for blazing sevens. I don't think it sets up well for horses who are going to want to make a move from the back of the pack because a, there's not going to be a lot of pace to run into and B the track is holding on to front end speed. Like there's no tomorrow. So all those things are kind of working against instant coffee. He's a very honest horse. He's a horse I like a lot. I like his running style. I actually like that kind of grinded out style a little bit. Um, but it's not always the most predictable on certain days if he doesn't get the exact right conditions. A little bit like Red Route 1 in that regard. So he's a horse. Am I going to be using him? Uh, probably not, actually. I, I think he's a horse. Maybe I use him on the bottom end of a trifecta. I really can't see Instant Coffee as a serious win threat in this Preakness. It's coming off a little bit of a layoff. Obviously, it'll be almost two months again between races. We saw he was not particularly sharp in that Louisiana Derby. Again, didn't have a lot of speed to run behind. Not going to be a lot of speed necessarily in this Preakness stakes. And it's a track that is holding on to front end speed very, very well. So all those things 
working together, he's not the type of horse that I'm going to want to use in this type of a spot. But certainly a very, very good horse and one that I, I think we'll hear from certainly over the summer in a variety of different circuits, whether he goes up to Saratoga or whether he goes maybe that Midwest circuit of going to, you know, the Indiana Derby, the Ohio Derby and places like that. So, uh, you know, he listen, he's a very good horse, but I just don't see it in the Preakness Stakes. And make sure to comment below if you think I'm crazy. If you really like instant coffee, let me know why or why not. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to all that we're doing here on Trust the Province. Finally, make sure to throw me a follow on Twitter at the handle at Fail to Menace. Until next time, friends, my name is Matthew DeSantis, wishing you a great and profitable day at the races and reminding you that it's now post time.